Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I recently did a video where I organized my 12 by 12 scrapbook paper and kind of I had taken apart some of my scrapbook kits that I made and was kind of deciding which of the 12 by 12 scrapbook papers I wanted to keep and which I wanted to recycle. So as I was going through, I discovered this sheet of paper and this is from Pink Paisley's Turn the Page collection. And I had never seen this before because it was hidden in my scrapbook kits, which is why I took about part of the kits in the first place. But I was really inspired by this piece of paper and decided I would make a card from it. A lot of times I like to use scrapbook papers, um, mostly six by six paper, but I also will use some 12 by 12 paper as well, um, just to kind of incorporate into a, a greeting card. So in this case, I think I'm going to be using this floral paper for a background on the card. And I'm going to show you the stamps that I chose and the sentiments and how I kind of put everything together to make a really pretty kind of springtime themed card. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm starting off with a four and a quarter by five and a half white note card that I'm going to be using for the base of my card. And I'm just going to trim down the scrapbook paper to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'll decide later whether I want to make a border or not. In this video, I kind of, before I edited it down, I wasn't sure how I was going to make the card. So this is kind of my thought process as I'm going. So it's a little bit of a longer video. So you'll see how I kind of try and decide how to kind of design everything on the card. So right now I'm trying to decide which panel to use. The paper has different sized flowers and depending on how you cut it, you're gonna get larger or smaller flowers on your card panel. So I decided to use the smaller flowers card panel and I'll save the other one for another project. And then I'm just fitting it to the front of the note card and I decide to cut down about a half, or no, a quarter inch border on the edges there, just so that it has a little bit of a white border on the front. And I like the way that looks. So I'll go ahead and set the card aside. And I'm using this stamp set from Paper Tray Ink called Vintage Linens. It's really pretty. And I have this idea to do some vellum flowers and have kind of a solid cardstock backing. And so I'm taking some yellow cardstock from, I think this is from My Favorite Things. I'll have all the links below. And then also some pink cardstock that kind of matches the, the floral paper. And I'm just die cutting the, the um, kind of the shadows of the flowers so that I can use those as a background. And you'll see how I do that in a minute. And then next I'm going to stamp the leaves from the stamp set using vintage jadeite dye ink. And this is also from Paper Tray Ink. It's a really pretty kind of jadeite, vintage jadeite color. And I thought that would look really nice with the leaves and kind of match the scrapbook paper. So I'm gonna just stamp these a couple of times onto the, to the card stock and then I'm going to die cut the leaves as well. I love paper tray ink stamps. I haven't used any in a while. They were my first stamp company that I really kind of started off with when I started making cards. And I just, I love their, their stamp sets really stand the test of time. And so I love their floral ones especially. So I use those a lot. So then I'm just going to um, get the kind of line up the the dies. The dies are a solid die, so they're not an outline die. So you kind of have to eyeball it to get it over the um, stamped image so you can die cut it straight. Another option would be to die cut the leaves first, and then you have the, the opening right there. You can pop the opening into your misty, and then put the other parts of the leaves, like pop them back into the the spaces and then stamp on top of the leaves if you want to line everything up. You could do it like that and put, you know, put the stamp over it and line it up. So I've, I've done it for a long time. So I just kind of eyeball it and it, it works out. So next I'm taking some of the kind of inner outlines of the flowers and I'm going to heat emboss those onto some thick vellum. And this vellum is from Cut Cardstock. They have a really nice heavyweight vellum that I like to use when I'm 
stamping on making flo- flowers and that kind of thing. It just it it's a nice kind of thicker, um, less fragile paper. So I'm just using <clears throat> excuse me, Versamark ink, and then I'm oh and before I did that I used a powder bag just to kind of um, make sure there's no static on top of the the vellum. <coughs> excuse me, and then I am using some filigree white embossing powder also from that I got from Paper Tray Ink and you'll see how pretty that is with the flowers and I'm just going to heat emboss that on the vellum and then I'll trim those flowers out with the matching dye. With vellum it's always a good idea to heat emboss from the back so that you don't burn the front since vellum can be a little more fragile and I just quick run the, the heating gun over the front too, just to make sure everything's dried. And then I'm gonna set this aside to dry a little bit and then I'll work on the next part of the card. So I like the way those turned out. So I've got the main card right now with the floral panel and I'm kind of trying to decide where I want the flowers to go and the leaves. Um, so it's just kind of a trying to figure out what the best design would be. And I'm using a uh, sentiment from, also from Paper Tray Ink, called Botanical Bounty. It's really pretty. I thought the the sentiment kind of matched the, the, like all the swirls and everything in the sentiment kind of matched the look of the flowers and everything. So I'm going to use this as kind of a, like a straight line. And I'm going to stamp it with VersaFine onyx black ink because I'm going to add some clear embossing powder over the top to, to kind of heat emboss that too and make it look nice and glossy. So I'm just going to create a sentiment strip right now and then kind of decide how much I want to cut it down when I put the design of the card together. And for some reason when I stamped it there was like some kind of a fuzz or something on top of the stamp so I, I noticed it when I stamped it it didn't stamp correctly so I quick took that off and and then re-stamped it again and everything was fine, so. And I'm using this cloth from, um, that I got from Amazon. They're these cloths that you can get, they're kind of like the, sh the chamois cloths, but it's nice because you can buy them in a set of, I think they come in three or four, and then you can cut them down even more. And then I use this little container from Lawn Fawn to kind of keep it open to the air so it, it kind of, it can stay moist over time and then sometimes it dries out, but then um, I really like that the system. So then I'm using some clear embossing powder and I'm just gonna heat emboss the sentiment and that's all ready to go. And I'm just going to set that aside and then trim out the vellum flowers that I heat embossed. And I've got everything, if you notice, I have my magnet here and I had a little cup with the stamps that I keep them in. Whenever I'm working with stamps and dies, I make sure I keep those on top of my desk so that I don't lose any of the little pieces because that can be a pain, be a kind of a pain to try to find those on your carpet. So now I'm just gonna trim out the sentiment into a long strip. And like I said, I'll decide how much I wanna cut it down later once I kind of set everything up. And then I'm gonna um, keep the, I'm adding the cardstock scraps to this little box that I have under my desk and I just keep all kinds of scraps and that's where what I use to die cut things and to cut uh, stamp sentiments and it's nice because you never have any waste for of your paper you're always kind of using as much as you can so so that's nice to have so now I'm just kind of arranging the card I'm trying to decide how I want to attach the vellum to the background of the the, the little cardstock solid backgrounds and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it all the way over the top of the cardstock and I end up kind of leaving a little kind of offsetting the vellum onto the background and I think that looks really good and I'm using the Tombow tape runner I think that works well with vellum it doesn't really show through that much and you can't you can't notice it so I'm just gonna attach the vellum to the cardstock and then Kind of do some more arranging. So now I'm going to add 
kind of figure out where I want everything to go as far as the leaves and the sentiment, everything is concerned. And I actually like, I do this a lot on cards. I'll, I'll put the front panel, like the decorative panel on the front of a card. I'll add that kind of off to one corner. And I don't know why, I just like the way that looks sometimes. So I'm doing that again with this card. And then I'm just adding some heavy duty tape runner to the back of the panel. I'm just gonna lay this flat on the card. And like I said, off to the kind of to the left corner, top corner. And then I'm just gonna kind of layer everything else. So I'm gonna have the sentiment at the bottom here. And this is a design I use a lot, but I like the way it looks. It's kind of, it's clean and simple with some layering. And I think it's just a nice design. So I'm gonna set that there. And then I'm just gonna trim off the extra after I kind of figure out where everything's going, make sure that's where I want everything to be. I'm gonna trim it off with my nonstick scissors. And then I'm just adding some foam tape to the backs of the floral pieces. And I'm going to arrange those around the sentiment. So I'm happy with that. And then I'm gonna tuck in the leaves Kind of figure out where I want those to go. And again, I'm going to be using some foam tape for that. And sometimes if you just look at the, the design and your eye just is happy with it, then you know it's right. So I, I really like the way this looks. And now I want to add a couple of little enamel dots. And these are actually dots from Doodlebug Designs. They're, they're matte um, enamel dots. And I'm trying to figure out which sizes and how many to add. I usually like to add three, and I'll do three, three sizes. But in this case, I'm thinking I might just like the two. And again, I don't really know why, but for some reason when my eye looks at it, it's just, it looks better that way. So I'm just going to, I think just keep the two. I'm kind of messing around with the third one to see if that's what I want to do, but I end up just using two. And I'm adding some glue dots to the back just to make sure that they're secure. I keep a lot of different size glue dots on my desk and the card is finished. So thanks for, so much for joining me today. And I hope you got some fun ideas on how to use your scrapbook paper to make cards. And be sure to sign up for my newsletter. If you like making cards and you're interested in hearing more information about what I'm going to have on my channel, my Etsy shop, and that kind of thing, I also include a free card sketch every month. So if you're looking for something like that to kind of help you with your card making, that's definitely something to keep in mind. So thank you again for joining me today, and I will see you in my next video.